OpenAI's Sora 2 is clearly one of the best video models in the world right now, and one of its most powerful features is something called cameos. It lets you place a specific character's likeness into multiple scenes, giving you creative control over continuity, storytelling, and personalization. And although most people right now are using it for memes, that's probably the least interesting use case for it. So in this video, I'll show you how to automate the cameos feature using N8N and show how to use it with both Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro, which was recently released, so you can see the quality difference between the base and pro models. You'll also learn how to structure your prompts for cameos and also get a glimpse of where this tech is headed so you can stay ahead of the curve. And the great part is the tools we'll use are all no code so anyone can do this even if you're a total beginner. If you can drag and drop things then you're pretty much all set. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams and now founded my AI agency and also RoboNuggets, our education arm, where we have several hundred members, all AI practitioners across the globe. And here, our mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless what your background is. With a wealth of AI lessons that most people will join for, but most members stay because of the community that we have built. So before we go through this workflow, as well as the improvements we've done since the previous Sora 2 lesson that we did, I'll just quickly show how it works. Because once you have this automation set up on your side, then what you just need to do is to fill in this G Sheet input node, which is connected to this template, which if we expand that, you'll see that we're going to use the Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro models for this example. We want the aspect ratio to be vertical, but there's also an option with Sora 2 and in this system to do horizontal videos as well. And in this column is where we will input the cameo that we want. And this is basically the person's username at Sora. So for Sam Altman, for example, it is essentially at Sam A. And for this example, we're also going to pass along an image reference, which if we click on this URL, we're just going to have Sam promote this OpenAI mug. And we found this image online. The way we got this URL is by just doing a right click and clicking on copy image address. And that is how you can get that URL. And then if you check this column for your prompt or your direction, what we're basically asking is for this system to have Sam hold and talk about this mug and how all employees will get it on the 1st of November. For each of these, we're going to generate two videos. So a total of four videos so that we can compare the base and pro models. And finally, we have this master prompt reference column which if you read through that, that's just a prompt template for a UGC type of ad that we used previously. And the reason why that's important is because all of these inputs we will pass along to our AI agent who will be creating the prompts for us. And essentially, this AI agent is tasked with looking at this master prompt as its best practice basis for crafting the prompts that we ask for. So that's an option for you if you want your AI agent to expand your prompt. But later in the video, I'll also show how to use this system if in case you want to use your prompt directly without expanding it. So we'll just execute this workflow to simulate how it runs when it's scheduled. And this part one at the top is just to create the prompts. So once that has finished, the final output of this section is now to log the prompts into our sheet two, which if you head to that, we now have the prompts for those four videos that are ready to be passed into Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro. And this is just useful as an initial step if in case you want to double check that these video prompts are up to spec and are the ones that you need so that you can change them before you proceed to part two. So if you're automating this, you can schedule this to run on a daily basis, for example, to create the prompts for you. And then this part two will be to create the videos themselves. So we can schedule that separately on the frequency that we want. If, for example, you are auto posting this to Instagram three times a day, then this schedule trigger can be configured to run three times as well. But just to simulate how it runs when it's scheduled, we can just switch this execute workflow to part two and just click on this. And this will now run to get our final prompts and pass it to Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro. All right, so now when that section has finished running, the automation now mark these videos as done and we now have these videos that we can watch. So I've been waiting to show you all this, the official OpenAI mug. And yes, it's as glossy as it looks and every single OpenAI employee is getting one on November 1st. So I just got my hands on this awesome OpenAI mug and guess what? Every one of us gets it on November 1st. It's black, it's bold, and it actually makes work feel cooler. Bold and sleek and black and white, it's actually perfect for those never ending brainstorms. And you know what? Every single employee is getting one on the 1st of November. Okay, so I've been waiting to show you this Meet the brand new OpenAI mug. Shiny, right? I love how clean that logo looks and all OpenAI employees are getting one come November 1st. So all of those videos have been generated by this system. And a couple of things to note. One is Sora 2 was actually able to follow our direction around the dialogue being about the OpenAI mug and how all employees will get it on the 1st of November. However, I do think though that for use cases like this, where you need like a UGC type of content, the difference between Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro is minimal at best. You can try both of them for sure for your specific use case. And I'll also break down the costs in the end so you can decide which one is better. 
But in the second example we'll do, you'll probably see more of the differences there. But most importantly for this illustration, you can see that even if we're accessing Sora through an automation and through N8N, we're still able to use the Cameo feature and have Sam Altman in there. And so the question now becomes, how did this system achieve that? And how did we automate the Cameo feature in Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro? Well, this workflow, as you may have noted, it acts sort of like a mini application where once you learn how to use it, you can create those videos on autopilot and in bulk for yourself or for your clients. And if you're completely new, this automation, we built it entirely in N8N, which is a no-code automation tool similar to Zapier or Make.com, but it's gotten much more popular because of the way that it integrates these AI models. And again, if you're new, what's great about N8N is if you have the template for this, which we'll make available in the community, if you're a member, you can just import that file template and that will load the this automated system for you from scratch. But if in case you want to learn how this works node by node, you can also just check this preceding lesson that we did where I showed how each of the nodes here are configured so that you can follow along there. And basically what we did coming from this previous lesson is improve this template a bit in order for us to use the Cameo feature as well as the newly launched Sora 2 Pro model. And I think the best way to show how we use Sora 2 Pro as well as the Cameo feature in this system is to just go through how this workflow ran when we executed it earlier. Because if you remember, at the very beginning, we just have this master prompt Google Sheet node, which if we open that, you'll see here N8N's common design of working, where you have the input data here coming from previous nodes. You have the configuration area here for the node that you are setting up, which given this configuration, it provides us an output that it passes along to future nodes. And what this node basically did is it's just connected to our Google Sheet and it just loaded those two rows for us into N8N's instance so that we can pass it along to our AI agent. But prior to that, we just have this analyze image node in order to also provide a description of what our image reference is so that our AI agent has context on what that image contains. And if we open this AI agent, the important refinement we did here is this user prompt, which is sort of like the prompt or the message that you send to AI models like ChatGPT, which if we expand that, we just have an expression here with some green values and green text. But in reality, when this node ran, what it basically told the agent is to give it two ideas about the main topic. And you can see here all of the inputs that we prepared in our Google Sheet template from earlier. And this time we're also giving it context on the cameo that we want to include, which is Sam A at this point. And if we go to the second item that we passed, we also now give it context on which model we want to use, which is Sora 2 Pro. And then like the previous lesson, we also give it this master prompt so that it has reference on the structure that it needs to follow. So when this AI agent ran, what it basically did is give us these values and most importantly, these prompts for which there are four prompts in total in here, which same as in the previous lesson, we just log into our Google Sheets that we now plays in Sheet 2 that would contain all of our individual videos once they're created in here. And so now coming from these four video prompts, how did we automate passing them into Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro just by using these values? Well, that is now handled by the part two section here at the bottom where we always start with just arranging the inputs. For this one, we use the Google Sheet node once again, where it's just connected to that sheet. And you can see here its output would be the four items that we're about to create a video for. And the actual videos are being created through this node, which if we open that, you can see that we're sending these prompts into Key AI, which if you're completely new, if you go to Key.ai, it's basically an AI model marketplace or aggregator. And this is useful for automators because they make connecting and using these models much easier for us. And if you go to their API market, and if you search for Sora, you'll find this link. And here is where you can access Sora 2 directly. So if we expand this, you can use the base Sora 2 models in here as well as as Sora 2 Pro, which they added just a few days ago. So like with other front end interfaces, you can just go in here and add your prompts and select your aspect ratios. And if you want the watermark in there or not, but to use this in an automation, we go to the API tab in here and just read through the documentation here and understand it, which we've already done. And so this node already contains all of the valuable information there. But the key reason why this node itself is quite flexible is because if we go to the request that we're actually sending, which is here in the body, if I expand this, you'll see we have this pretty complex looking expression, but basically what it's doing is just crafting this structure where if we said that we want to use Sora 2, then it will use Sora 2. And if we go to the next item that we passed, if we said that we want to use Sora 2 Pro, then it will just use Sora 2 Pro. And for this round, since we pass an image reference as well, then it just defaults to using the image to video step. And if we're using this model in particular, we also need to add in the image URL. And so this expression is dynamically adding that because if you remember that URL is just pointing to that mug that we want to advertise 
APIs. And then finally, if we are using Sora 2 Pro, then as per Key AI's documentation, we also need to add in the duration, which is 10 seconds in this case, which you can actually change to 15 if you want, and also the size of the video. And also here in this prompt is how we're using cameos, because it turns out if you just include this at Sam A, which is basically the cameo user handle of Sam Altman into your prompt, even if you're using the API, then you'll be able to use their Cameo within the automation as well. So if we shuffle through this, you'll see we passed it on every single prompt. And so quite simply, if we include that in our prompt and they have their Cameo profile set so that everyone can access it and use it, then you'll be able to use it in this automation as well. And by the way, a quick shout out to Ryan because this Cameo tip he posted in our community a few days back. And so if we shuffle through these four items, that's actually the four video prompts that we pass along to KI, where if you check the output here, it says, it's successful in passing that request and here we just have a wait node to wait for those generations to finish and once they are done this get video step captures those mp4 files which again we showed in the preceding lesson on how these nodes are configured and then finally when those videos are ready we just have this final google sheets node which again is linked to our google sheet and what this does is just mark the video status as done which it has done here and also add the video output coming from sora 2 and sora 2 pro to be placed in this column so there that is the automation in full it's very flexible if in case you want to use sora 2 or sora 2 pro or if you want to use a cameo or no cameo then just setting up this one workflow can and enable you to use them in your automations. Now, there's another example that I wanted to illustrate because I think this second example will show the differences between Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro much better. And it also shows another feature of this AI system that makes it quite flexible. So for this run that we did, you can see that we're going to use Mark Cuban's Cameo, which he recently set up, I believe. And there's actually a very interesting aspect on how Mark set this up, which I'll talk more about once we see the videos. But for this one, we're just going to do a horizontal video, one with Sora 2, one with Sora 2 Pro. And here, our only direction is to use the master prompt directly. So if in case you don't want to expand your prompt and you want to feed the system with an exact prompt, this is how you do it using this Google Sheet. And if you look at the master prompt reference, you'll see that what we are doing is we are just asking Sora to place Mark Cuban in the scene below and also show the Dallas Mavericks, which Mark Cuban is an owner of. And then here you can see I have a pretty complex prompt that I didn't make myself. This is actually coming from the Sora 2 website itself. And I gave this tip previously, but again, something unique that opened AI did for Sora is that they also made it a social media app. So after you sift through all of the memes in here, eventually you'll find some of these great videos from which you can take some inspiration on the style from. And one of the users I found that are sharing really good prompts, if you just look at some of their creations here, is this account, Kago. And let's say we want to use this style in particular. What's great about this is they also share their prompts here. So I just copied that and placed that in our Google Sheet. And so with this setup, we just ran our automation again. And these are the videos that we got. Mavericks never left the fight. We've rebuilt, retooled, and this season, we'll retake the crown. Every spark, every charge, it's all leading to one thing. Dallas back on the throne. Mavericks never left the fight. We've rebuilt, retooled, and this season, we'll retake the crown. Every spark, every charge, it's all leading to one thing. Dallas back on the throne. Okay, so those are both very good, but clearly if you're working with animation, I think Sora 2 Pro was able to win in the quality on the VFX domain. Although I think for this run, the lighting for Sora 2 for Mark himself is a bit more interesting. So if you're after this look, you can probably refine the prompt to have more cinematic lighting. And what's interesting about Mark Cuban's cameo is without us doing any prompting to add this, it seems to have added this cosplusdrugs.com website tag in the end. And in case you don't know, that company is actually Mark Cuban's pharmaceutical group. And I don't think there's a way to verify this but most likely what mark did when they set up their cameo is he just added cost of instructions to always include costplusdrugs.com into every video generation which you can actually do once you set up your cameo which most likely is what mark did because if you look at his cameos here they almost always have that website and tag and also just as a bonus tip if you already have access to the sora 2 web app itself this is actually a great way to test out your prompts because they give you at least at the time of recording 30 generations per day it does have the or a watermark in here but an easy way to remove that is if we go to key ai again they now have this watermark remover which you can just paste the link to that sora video in here and it will remove those watermarks for you seamlessly so that is how you automate cameos in n8n and obviously right now since the technology is only released just a few weeks ago it's mostly just being used for memes at this point and there's also limitations on who can upload their own cameo through the sora app 
because it's only available for the US at the moment and for iPhone users. But clearly the underlying tech is already there. So it's just a matter of time before OpenAI lets us create cameos for our own characters or IP would be my guess. And this potentially has huge impact to the creative industry because if for example this technology develops further and we can create cameos for our own characters or IP, then it becomes so much easier to build content and media around these characters. Or if you built up an AI influencer like this account who has millions of followers and is basically a CGI influencer even before AI became a thing, then the team behind this channel can scale their content much more efficiently and effectively by using the technology behind cameos. So yeah, this space is only going to grow. I think if you sift through the memes and the fluff, we'll see this technology become a game changer in creative media, especially once creators and brands can confidently build and create content around characters that they actually own. And the other important point to note is also the costs that continue to go down. Because before, if you remember when VO3 first launched just months ago, it took something like $6 just for an 8 second video but now you have Sora 2 that can give you 10 seconds for just 15 cents or if you want higher quality you can get Sora 2 Pro at 45 cents for 10 seconds and like I mentioned before this template we made it available just in the RoboNuggets community which if you're not yet part of it check it just in the link below to see if it's for you we have tons more lessons here in the classroom all around creating with AI through automation and there's also a really strong community of AI creators here so I can just browse through some of the wins that people are having here so see if that's for you just in the link below and if you haven't subscribed yet here on this platform consider doing so because it helps us a lot to create more educational content like this but that's it for this one i'll see you guys next time thank you